Hello scouts, Mr. Kugler here again by the campfire pit and let's make believe for a moment that we're backpacking and we're in an area where ground fires are permitted. Now I love Dutch ovens. You guys know that I love Dutch ovens, but the one thing I'm not backpacking with is a cast iron Dutch oven. But given the opportunity with a ground fire, I may travel with this. These are uh, three pie tins that are fastened together with binder clips. Just paper for joining together paper. The back edge of this is about half inch, five eighths of an inch. And inside I have a little cooling rack that I use to keep the uh, pan that I'm going to use up off the bottom. And the top is an inverted pie tin with a little thumb turn and a little uh, screw with a, uh, a wing nut on the top that holds the two together. And these can actually come apart. I'll leave them together for now. And what we're going to do is, this is gonna be our Dutch oven. We're gonna cook on the inside. We're going to put our makeshift Dutch oven made out of these three pie tins on top of three rocks to give a little bit of an air space. These are equally sized stones. And we'll sit our makeshift Dutch oven on top of that. And then I'll use some tongs and I'll put some coals from the wood fire on top to be able to bake with it. Now, I could bring along with me my Dutch oven gloves, but these are a lot of fabric, a lot of, or a lot of leather, a lot of uh, weight to them. So instead I've got a good quality pair of leather gloves that are a little bit less material, a little lighter. I also have my tongs that I use for pots on the stove. That'll be helpful too, especially if I wanna take and spin the Dutch oven a little bit, they may be able to help me with that as well. The other thing that's important to consider when you're backpacking is how am I going to, I, you know, for, I, I wanna cut down on weight. So do I wanna bring my big can of canola oil? I don't think I do. There's two concerns, not only the weight, and I'm carrying a lot of material that I'm never gonna need. But I know what it's like when one of these caps comes off and this thing starts spraying everywhere, it makes a mess. So this is not gonna be coming with me. The other thing, one of the ways that I could deal with that is I've got a foil tin here in a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna use the Ziploc bag in a second for another part of this. But I actually took and I sprayed the inside of the pan in advance, so I don't have to worry about oiling it on the trail. The other thing that you can do is take, this is a full square paper towel, and inside the Ziploc bag, I put fold it up and put the paper towel, and I spray, or I poured in, excuse me, some vegetable oil on top of the paper towel. Now I have a paper towel, which is saturated with oil that I can use to lubricate and cover the inside, grease the inside of a pan that I'm gonna use without having to carry that whole thing. So something to keep in mind when you're cooking. So let's get started. I also selected something for today, which is a Bisquick Complete, which means that for this packet of buttermilk biscuits, all I have to do is add a half a cup of water, nothing else. And what I'm gonna start by doing is, I'm gonna take my pan out that I'm going to use, put it aside here for a second. Remember, that's already sprayed with the oil. I'm gonna fold this back a little bit so I can get into the center. This has a part where I could cut. So I'm gonna open up my package and I'm going to dump it right in one corner of my bag there. This is a one gallon freezer Ziploc bag. Now, my Nalgene bottle here, which is 
16 ounces, carry 16 ounces at the max, is loaded to the 16 half, the 16 ounce mark. And knowing that I need a half a cup, I know I need four ounces. So I'm gonna take this from 16 ounces down to 12 ounces. At least that's the plan. Just about halfway there. Right on the mark. I can always add more, can't take it out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, close up my bag, um, leave a little bit of air, but not a lot. And I'm going to work that water, trying to keep all my ingredients in the bottom corner there. And I'm going to fully incorporate the water with that biscuit, biscuit mix. Normally, I probably have to add some milk, maybe an egg to make this work. And so to have this packet here that's just add water is such a great convenience when you're on the trail and maybe keeping things cold uh, or that extra weight is an issue. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is try to get all my ingredients back to one area here. Of the bag, one corner of the bag. So now with all my ingredients, pretty much down to that bottom corner, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut off carefully the bottom corner of my bag here. Now I'm gonna take my container and I'm gonna use this like a pastry bag, like you'd put frosting on. Take, got three biscuits there. We'll be able to do this in two. We're gonna take our, we're gonna take our Dutch oven. We're gonna get our biscuits set up on our cooling rack with the other lid on. Now we'll go and we'll set this up on the fire. So I want to be careful with the heat. So I've got some good leather gloves here. Put those on. Now granted, I have to still be careful. I can't rely on these leather gloves. Bring my makeshift Dutch oven over here. I'm going to load up the top with some coals. So what I've done is I've dragged some coals away from that hot fire because just the heat of that fire is going to create some problems for me. I'm going to take and I'm going to add my three stones. One of the advantages I have is doing biscuits. It's not like a batter where I have to worry about having the Dutch oven perfectly flat or level uh, to worry about taking and uh, having it not um, having the batter settle to one side and have it too thick in one area and not in the other. Um, I will not need to worry about that with these biscuits because they're so thick. Get a little bit extra on the top here. We can always add more coals to the top, but it's kind of hard if it just gets away from us. So let's 
and clear some of these coals away so we don't have too much bottom heat. And normally this would probably take us about 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, we'll check this out and see how long this takes. So Scouts, every five minutes probably with this, because I'm a little worried about the, uh, the amount of heat and whether it's evenly spaced, I can either take my gloves, spin my top, take and spin my bottom the other way. Just like a normal Dutch oven, I want to be able to do that every five minutes or so to be able to make sure that my baking is, uh, the heat is even and I don't have any hot spots. So I know when we're doing Dutch oven cooking with charcoal, we can count the briquettes and be able to figure out the temperature. But how do we know how to regulate the heat when we're using wood coals, especially with something as unorthodox as this pie plate, pie, uh, Dutch oven made out of pie plates? Well, I always say you were given a thermometer in your hand where you could bring in your hand and get a sense for how hot it is over it. And I often say when you're doing a Dutch oven meal with briquettes and you know the right count to give you that temperature you need, come in and put your hand over and get a sense for the amount of temperature that's coming off so that when you're doing wood coals or you go back to your Dutch oven, you want to get a feel for whether or not you need more coals, you'll have something to compare it to. I'm thinking we're at about 20, 21 minutes. Now I did peek in here a couple times. So just like any time you're baking with a Dutch oven, when you open up that lid, you're going to add a little bit to your cook time. So probably if I wasn't so impatient or worried about burning them, I could have shaved a couple minutes off the bake time. I'm guessing they're just about done. I went and kept checking the, the heat on top to see how much heat was there. Uh, about five minutes ago, I added a little extra heat to the top. The bottom still seemed great. Uh, I think one of the secrets is that cooling rack underneath that foil pan, uh, because I think it would be a little bit too challenging to end up with something that wasn't burnt on the bottom if I had not had that rack there. So let's check and see what these look like. And I think those are done. Nice and crispy on the top. They cracked open. Now I picked the Bisquick mix here in part because it was just to add water. I wanted to drive home that point for uh, backpacking. You can actually do a cake mix uh, where, uh, especially if you're able to bring in some eggs or maybe use some powdered eggs uh, and some powdered uh, milk if your ingredients required milk. Uh, and you could have simply put it in a pan like this. The beauty part about this is, think about a lot of times when we go backpacking. We get into camp, just before five, we make dinner and we're just sitting around for a while. If we've got a campfire going, I know this doesn't hold a lot of contents, but we have nothing but time around the campfire to enjoy each other's company and have some fun making biscuits. So I hope this gave you a different way of thinking about Dutch oven cooking or faux Dutch oven cooking when you're backpacking. And I uh, hope you think about uh, uh, things that you could cook if you were backpacking or bake in this instance and expand your menu choices and your cooking techniques and get out there and have some fun uh, cooking uh, with your patrol or your troop.